Welcome, my name is Shagrot and I'm going to make a small series on uh, Star Trek Online. Uh, this game went uh, free to play a while ago and I want to make a small tutorial especially dedicated to a friend of mine who started playing a while ago and uh, so, well, he can get a little how to's and what to do and etc and you all can also enjoy it. First, uh, we we reach this character scre screen where we can select between between different uh, options. If this is the first time you are playing, then you won't have any character in here, and you will only have, have the option of creating a new Federation character. To access to Klingon characters, you need to first to hit level 24 with your Federation character. Also, you can go to here and create content. For that, you need to create a character and pay a fee. Uh, with Dilithium, which is one of the game's currencies, uh, and uses one of your character's slots, by the way. Uh, you can then have, uh, if you don't pay a penny and don't buy anything with in games money, you will have the one Federation character. And once you hit level 24, you will have one Federation character and the option of creating a Klingon character. You can have both. However, if you buy the option in the C store, because the game has no monthly fee but it uh, has an internal store, you can. Um, have more characters. I have. I can have three more unrestricted, because I already have a science uh, character in the making. But I am going to create one. Uh, we hit new federation character and select uh, <coughs> a career. Since I already have uh, engineering officer and science officer in the federation, I'm going to create a tactical officer. Yay! Engineering uh, engineers do a tank in space. They are really hard to take down, and uh, <coughs> on the ground they rely on buffing, the buffing, and the use of different uh, extra extra gizmos like turrets and drones. They also get a very very lovely skill called orbital strike. That means your ship will fire from orbit. Regardless of your ship's size uh, or equi and equipment, the skill will do the same damage. It will only depend on the level of the skill, which means it's a character level dependent skill. Science officers can uh, sense uh, the buffing power, called an anonymity, an anonymity infection that will spread among the enemies. And they are essentially the healers of the game that can also buff and debuff. And then you got the tactical officers. Tactical officers are devoted to damage dealing and have different advantage in that regard. Uh, their special capability compared to the others two I just mentioned is that they can ask for a tactical team to be deployed for a while with them. That means uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's two or four. NPCs that will be uh, nearby and start attacking your enemies. Anyway, we hit next, and then we need to select a race. In the Federation, you have Human, Dorian, Bajoran, Benzit, etc., 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 and Alien. I prefer to make Alien characters because you can select all the racial characteristics, characteristics instead of having two already selected for you. Uh, you can also select gender. I'll go with female. Thank you. And so we hit next. In here, we need to hit customize rights and select the different rights. Since I am so silly that uh, I recorded a previous version of this tutorial uh, with the microphone turned off. Yeah, I'm that uh, distracted all around, all the time. Uh, I already know uh, what characteristics what traits I want. There are two kinds of traits anyway. Uh, grounds and space. You can see this is uh, accurate. It's a space trait that gives 
accuracy, that means it's easier for you to hit the enemy. And then there are ground traits that uh, increase well damage you do, resistance you get, things like that, depending on what you get. Uh, astrophysicist is one that I got with my engineer, and I don't want, uh, and I shouldn't have because it's mostly for a science officer. So I'll go with efficient captain. <coughs> that means that uh, the less point, the, the less priority I give to one of the four subsystems, I will explain later about those. Uh, the more the small bonus they'll get from this. <coughs> Elusive, which means I am harder to hit in space, and 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 and, and, and warp theorist, which means I get more power to all my subsystems. Uh, that means my character is 100% uh, focused on a space game. Uh, on grounds game, it will be able to hold its rounds, but it is not as optimized as others. This is not uh, a great issue because the only for example, uh, a healer, a science officer in the grounds, uh, benefits greatly for, from being um, a betasoid because they generate less threat. And having your healer being attacked, it's always a bad idea. We hit next and we go to the option of customizing your head. You can see we can choose between different predefined heads options, or we can go to advanced where we can select. It's of the it's one of those one by one. You can go ahead and select the kind of head you want. I go with humanoid. The the type of head I prefer bigger eyes. The color of skin around here is the most human-like one. Yeah, like this. The pattern gradients. If you want them to have some marks or whatever, I will, I'll go with solid color. Complexion, standard, standard, uh, and different things. This changes depending on your race. Since I'm running for an alien, I got uh, the most custom customization opportunities. I'll go with the standard one. It's more. It has more soft uh, characteristics. Then the forehead detail. I'll go with known. I don't want any kind of rich in here. Uh, nose detail, I'll go again with known. I will, I'm making essentially a customized human female, so don't worry about that. You can select to have some tattoo of scars. If you can see them, that's because of this. You need to go around and try to find it somewhere. It also helps to select an easy to see color. Yeah, here it is. You move the where it, where is it with this, and you increase or decrease the scale and rotation. Easy. You can do the same with the tattoos and the different scars. I'll go with known thanks. The eyes can be of three types in this in this case: humanoid, f uh, slit, and reflective. I go with humanoid. I'll keep the color of the scholar eye in white and the color of the eye in blue. And the eyes, the ears. I'll go with humanoid. I could leave this uh, like so and, s and say, "Hey, you're an, uh, what was it? Deltons, Alphons? I don't remember." But I'm going to go for some some hair. Anyway, earrings. That means usually Bajoran earrings. No thanks. Hairstyle. I'll go with a um, little military hairstyle. I had one before, yeah, this is good. I also like the color and here how much how much uh, shininess it has. Okay, let's leave it like so. The eyebrows color and like uh, this it's good and I want them to be yeah raised. Raised too is good also. Most accessories, attachments down there. They attach. Known thanks. Organic attachments to the head. Again, known thanks. And here we can modify the different settings to change the face and the like. Uh, a little small head. This, 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 and here are small changes around to make things a little more customized. Uh, 
I don't know where is uh, should be somewhere here yeah with shin length six size yeah a little more okay perfect like so should be good enough I can later modify it here we did I skip yeah I had to skip one Customize your body. Uh, sorry, sometimes my mouse ma makes a double click without telling me. The stance, the stance she will be taking, depending on how things are. I will go with the feminine one because, frankly, the seductive is really awkward. Well, standard is good to go. You can make her really small, real big. Doesn't matter regarding how high you can jump or how quick you can. You you can run, but it it helps. Uh, like this, it should be good enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, side finger length. Okay, perfect. Leg length is okay. Little less le uh, book for the legs. Small, perfect. Next, here we can choose uh, predefined variants for the uniforms. Hey, this one looks nice. I like it, but I don't like uh, the gloves. Advanced. This is the Sierra Ford uniform color configuration three. I'll go with color configuration yes three because the one is too much red for my taste. Mm, gloves, bare hands. Thank you very much. And she's wearing combat boots. Yeah, looks sharp enough. You can change colors. You can change selections. You you can make her wear a skirt. Select which kind which kinds of skirt later. It will it shows a lot of uh, detail and options to choose from. And you can do that for each of your characters. You can do that later in game. For example, okay, play now. <coughs> you can later cus further customize your character and you can do that with all your NPCs under your control. By the way, this is the loading zone. It asks me, do you want to play the tutorial or you would rather skip it? This is because this is not my first character. So if it were my first character, I think. I don't remember if it gives you the option, but I really suggest you to take the, the tutorial. I'm going to skip it anyway, because it would be... Oh dear, <laughs> I did hit play the tutorial. Well, you get to see it. A nice cinematic, and I'll be back with you as soon as I finish the tutorial. And yes, this is Leonard Nimoy speaking. Okay, this is uh, an opportunity, good uh, Seni, to check the combat situation. So you can... Hey, that was an Anika! Was it 7 of 9? Haha! <laughs> you can select a target, then hit uh, 1 or 2 to attack. Or you can go B and say, Hey, how are you doing? I'm going to attack you. Oh dear, I... It's a little hard to aim. I personally prefer this, which is the RPG mode, to the other, which is the um, the shooter mode. Fortunately, these drones won't adapt. In case you found drones who adapt, you can go to the repli replicator and create an energy remodulator. You hit U, place it in there, and perfect! We do have it here, by the way. Let me expand a little my my uh, action bars. So I've destroyed some board devices, I've killed some boards, and I've stumbled upon some loot. I have this configured so I don't have to confirm what I what I loot, but uh, this is a Cardassian logbox. Don't bother with them if they are green. If they are gold Cardassian board, uh, 
golden Kardashian lockboxes, however, uh, save them. They are valuable and useful. There is a 2.5% chance of a ship being in a green one, but if it is uh, In case it is uh, a golden one, they are a god book, uh, there's a 25%. And it's a ship that you can use, or if you don't want, but it's a really good ship, you can sell it in the exchange, which is uh, Action House uh, here, for about uh, 80 million credits. In case you need to know it, uh, you are initially limited to 10 million credits. Uh, but you can buy in the C store, which is in here, and services uh, to expand your energy cap to one billion, which I believe it's uh, a thousand millions. You can change weapons, by the way. You can equip two, equip two, unlike your bridge officers, by hitting set. I only have one weapon, however, so I won't go all Bruce Lee on the poor box. I will remain using my one hand phaser and again I am playing the I am playing the tutorial so don't worry. <laughs> it says middle mouse for palm strike, it's in it's in that three key, thank you. You will also get some tips and trips while you are going through the <coughs> through the tutorial. And here is the mini map. You can see the big map hitting M, increasing, decreasing the zoom level, etc. And I need to go to main engineering. Oh dear! What's that? Too much enemies. Oh dear! Well. These are just regular Borg drones, which aren't really that aggressive. You will find much more dangerous ones in a while. If you hit uh, Mayus while you're running, you well, well, you will run faster. Oh dear, do I have to help against the enemy? Oh, if I hit X, I am aiming, and Zeus will do more damage. Impressive. I don't remember that. So I need to protect engineering for ten more, five more seconds. Reinforcements will arrive. Speak to Commander Davis. Okay, out from this, where's Commander Davis? Here it is, we can see it here in the map. Or if we hit M, we can see that it's inside a yellow s bubble and with an I on top. I know I'm running through this, but that's because, well, I, I am fairly used to, to the game and I already made this uh, tutorial the first time I played. Okay, combat medic. Wow, perfect. Now, what else? Uh, speak with tactical officer. Uh, talk to tactical officer. Okay, speak with science officer. Okay, speak with engineering officer. Okay, speak with chief Pam Daniel. Yes, oh, dear. Well, I will change the uniform and rename her later. For now, I will beam to ship. Hey, look, again, Danica. Ah, of course, here's a, he, uh, she's a player, sorry. <laughs> Didn't realize that, uh, that uh, it was a map you would... Oh, space combat! Hey, this one's bigger than I thought. Rescue survivors from the major damaged ships. Mm, yes, yes, yes. 
Beam survivors from USS Calvin. What kind of ships uh, I, of ship am I flying now? Oh, it's a Miranda. Now the Oaklands. Let me hit Shift R for mind power to impulse. Uh, now the USS Boar. Here it is. Now from the Montreal. You can hit uh, full impulse for seconds and let them things go there well. Okay, I need to go to the USS Seacol, which is a science ship, Olympic class if I'm not mistaken. Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember this as being part of the of the tutorial, but it's uh, it's good. <coughs> so now we finish the mission, we warp to another system, and we keep on going. Mm, destroy the magic probes. Okay. You can see here we have. If if I hit uh, well, let me expand. Oh, I can't. If I hit uh, with my right button on top of any weapon, it's it switched to auto firing. Since I don't have any skill right now, I kind of uh, place everything on auto fire. I believe. Also, it is uh, useful to mention that you need to be in a 10 kilometers, uh, at most at 10 kilometers of any target, to fire at it or be fired from that target. Okay, now where am I? Destroy active probes, ODR. This is going to be a little more difficult than I thought. Also, if you are on full impulse, you will note that uh, power will be drained from the system. Well, this is going to be... Oh, plasma torpedo. I'm getting damage from the radiation. And I don't have evasive maneuvers. Oh, I had forgotten I, r I had torpedo high yield. Let me expand this to 3. Yes. Uh, in case you need to know, right now, uh, well, I can see this. My gosh. Uh, close. Beam down to Vega Colony. Well, I, I have this in here. Oh, dear. Brave. Well, let's go about that one. Uh, I can move this. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Rearrange huge. I can go for personal trade, I believe. Ship weapons, pers personal tray. I can l level it up. Nope. It is not a personal tray. Wait a second. Give me a second. Ah. Ship weapons, no. Big personal tray. Yep, that one was it. Okay, now I can beam down to the Vega Colony <sighs> with uh, my tactical team. I didn't remember it was this long, the tutorial, but so well. Anyway, more ground combat ensures. So I'll cut the, t uh, I'll cut the feet for seconds now. Oh dear. It shows that every that every uh, tactical officer you get first is an Andorian female. Eh? <laughs> okay, this part is interesting. It involves kids. Kids are what gives players skills. Uh, in this case, I get a photon grenade standard issue. That means I get this skill here, which is photon grenade. I also got cardio pulmonary resuscitation. The, this is the skill you use to uh, resuscitate or wake up fallen team members. I also hit set and switch to my primary 
weapon. I need to rescue four colonies to progress from this uh, situation. If I hit sh shift while I run, I run faster. I have a slow attack and you can see a, a big flank show up on the screen. That's because uh, combat is situational. It's aware of your uh, whereabouts. If you hit the enemy from a side, you will get a damage bonus, and if you hit it from behind, you get a, a higher damage bonus. Be aware, however, the enemy has the same advantage. And I throw a, a grenade. Haha. <laughs> Uh, that means that if the enemy takes you from behind, he will deal more damage to you than if you're facing them. Also, you can crouch, and you get a bonus that uh, while you get more damage from melee, you will also receive less damage from shooting. So it's ideal if you expect the enemy to be far away. Also, you can see this uh, weapon is fairly slow. This is not a problem right now, but uh, in higher level content, the Borg will adapt to your weapons. Uh, their adaptation mechanics in the game are quite uh, defined. Every four shots, and those four shots uh, have to be separ uh, separated for more than... Oof for more than... Um, let's see if I can find a more accessible... oh no, of course they will all be the same. For more than 0 0 0.35 seconds... Uh, I was telling... if they are uh, separated for more than 0 0.35 seconds uh, they will count, uh, they will count uh, normally, but if they are separated by less by the list of 0 0.35 seconds, they will not count as one. Because, I mean, uh, well, it's uh, something so you can use uh, quick. Oh, heavy tactical drone? No, no, no! So, it's, uh, so you can use some. What's the name? So you can use some rapid fire weaponry because we, we, without uh, having to worry about work. Uh, adapting too quickly with you having the chance of dealing real da damage because the quicker uh, a gun fires in here uh, the less damage it will do so in that ta at that uh, there was a time where sniping rifles with the slow e with the slow fire rate were better than uh, assault miniguns for example anyway uh I am nearly ending, I hope, the tutorial. I need to go with the battle group. Okay. There's a nav beacon... somewhere. Yes, full impulse, I know. Full impulse is with shift R. Uh, so, these are the skills that your bridge officers have. Torpedo high yield is not that useful, you know. Also, you may have noticed this. We need to disable. We need to disable the. Um, well, uh, I was telling we need to disable the something, so we can do something else. Oh dear. I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh yeah, uh, you can go in here to incre increase her experience, and in stations you can select what you want her to do. Uh, I must say that uh, another thing the game has. Uh, okay, incoming message. Did I already destroy the Borg sphere? Well. No, I didn't destroy the Borg Sphere. Okay. Now, uh, this is Transwarp, it's an instant jump. 
you can go instantly using it every 15 seconds to a place. You s uh, initially you will only be able to go to Earth Space Dock, but eventually you will have um, more options. Anyway, I believe this is more than enough for episode 1. In the next episode I will show you the duty officer system uh, the duty officer system dock at earth space dock and uh, some on the selection of ships and a small uh, well uh, as a series of tutorials on endgame LA missions which is where you will be farming most of your gear once you hit level 50. I will also explain about uh, the leveling system in Star Trek Online and uh, if you're worried about devoting too much time to this game, don't worry. Uh, it took to me about uh, 52 hours or 54, something like that, to reach uh, the level cap. So thanks for watching this uh, introduction to Star Trek Online and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye!